Hello. Welcome back to our series of videos on weighted least squares models. In this video, we will be focusing on the theoretical aspect of this method. To start off, let's first give a brief look over the generalized multiple regression model. The generalized multiple regression model is shown as the outcome variable being a function of its factors and error term. This model is used to summarize and study the relationship between these factors to the outcome. There are four assumptions made about this model. In the generalized model, we make the assumption that the mean of the response variable is a linear function of the predictors. The errors are independent and are normally distributed. The variance is also assumed to be constant. But what happens when variance is not constant? The different y observations for the cases would no longer have the same reliability since observations with smaller variances provide more information about the regression function than those with larger variances. In order to take into account for this, we use the WLS method. Since we are now using a model with different values of variance, Let's take a look at the variance-covariance matrix. Like before, the matrix will be a diagonal matrix with the diagonal comprising of sigma squared. Unlike the matrix using constant variance, each sigma squared has a different value. This is represented by the subscripts attached to each sigma squared. It should be noted that in real life, sample variance is unknown. For this video, we will be assuming that our variance is aren't known. Since we know the individual variances, we can calculate the different weights that we will be using. The weights are simply the reciprocals of the variance. Because they are inversely proportional, small errors will lead to larger weights, and larger errors will lead to smaller weights. This intuitively makes sense since we know that smaller variances provide more information on the model and should be more heavily weighted than those with larger errors. Now that we have our weights, let's use them. Since we know what our sample variances are, we can use the method of maximum likelihood to obtain the regression coefficients for our model. This is the same method used for the generalized model, except we substitute the variances with the appropriate weights. It should be noted that there is now a summation in the exponential, so don't just rewrite the likelihood function. We can now find the maximum likelihood estimators of the regression coefficients by maximizing the likelihood function, which is equivalent to minimizing the exponential. When we do so, we obtain QW. This is also known as the weighted least squares criterion. Take note that estimates presented in the WS, WLS method are the same presented in the generalized model. We can also use matrices to express the maximum likelihood and weighted least squares estimators. Our vector of estimated regression coefficients is denoted as beta hat WLS and is equal to the product of the matrices provided with matrix W being a diagonal matrix with the individual weights occupying the diagonal. If you were to take the expectation of beta hat WLS, you would attain beta the estimator is unbiased. The variance-covariance matrix is given by the second equation. That is all for this video on the weighted least squares model. In our next video, we will be applying the method on a toy dataset to give a more concrete understanding of the step-by-step -step process by using numerical data before we attempt to tackle a live data set.